Okay, and now I'm going to use an example here. Isaiah 40, 28. And I, I'll uh, use this example to demonstrate how to write the sermon, okay? Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the, the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay, now I first explain the passage. Have you not heard, have known and heard that the everlasting God, the God that lasts forever, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he creates the whole world, neither faints nor is weary. Weary. He, is ne he never faints. He never runs out of energy. He's never tired. Even he has so many things to do, he's never tired. His understanding is unsearchable. He has so much understanding. He has so much wisdom. It's unsearchable. It's impossible to understand. He gives power to the weak. So he has power and his grace. Now he has power, that's his nature. He gives power, that is grace. What he does for us to bless us. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. So he can give power to the weak. And to those who have no power, he can give them strength. Strength to, to love God, to love people, to serve God to have continual motivation. Like now, I have continual motivation to serve God every day, to spend time to love God, to spend time to write uh, messages, to write books. I have this continual strength from God because God has given me that strength. I don't feel uh, exhausted. I don't feel uh, uh, not motivated. I feel motivated all the time. Now, even the youth, shall faint and be weary. Even young people, they can get tired and then can get sleepy and tired. And the young men shall utterly fall. Even young people, when they are weak, they can fall down. Uh, like when they run, they can fall down. And those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. But those who wait on the Lord, who trust in the Lord, who wait on the Lord for the strength and to come to the Lord for strength, they, the strength shall be renewed, like what I share about myself, how I have continual motivation, continual strength to serve Him. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will have, like an eagle, they have strength forever, that they have continual strength, continual motivation. They shall run and not be weary, even though they have to run to help someone, run to serve God, they will not be tired. They shall walk and not faint. They shall walk and then not faint. Now, first, this can apply to physical strength. Now, I thank God that I do have physical strength all, my, all through the day when I trust in God. God gives me strength and health. But it also talks about emotional strength that we have. Emotional strength that we don't get uh, disappointed, that we don't have despair, we continue to have motivation. And also spiritual strength, that we know that God loves us, we know that God cares about us, so we have confidence when we come to God. And we know that God hears my prayer, God is with me all the time, God gives me strength, this will give us strength, spiritual strength. Now there are people who have spiritual strength, when you hear them talk, you can hear you can see that they have strength, they have motivation, they have power, they have confidence, they don't lose hope. So these people will say, wow, this is wonderful. And we can become like this too. When we live under the grace of God, I know that everything I do for God, God is very happy. When I pray to Him, God is very happy. When I love Him, He's very happy. When I serve God, when I bless other people, God is very happy. When I help a little, a little one of Jesus, God is very very happy. So this way we'll say, I am very happy 
because God is happy with what I'm doing, God will continue to bless me. Then we'll have continual uh, physical strength, emotional strength, and spiritual strength. Okay, now, negative examples of people who don't get strength from God. So here I list it out for you so they can see it. Even a youth shall fade and be weary, and a young man shall utterly fall. Even young people can lose strength and get tired. And uh, so even young people, they can have no strength. Actually, many young people get tired easily because they don't sleep well. They don't sleep early. And many Christians get spiritually weak and lost hope and even fall away from God. There are some Christians, because they don't look at the promises of the Bible, they don't look at, see how God has blessed their life and blessed other people. They just look at difficulties. They expect God to remove all the difficulties. Now, when we're living in this world, we always have difficulties. We always have difficulties. Ministry is not, you know, it's, it's not just easy work. We have to work hard. But we have strength because God is happy with us. Therefore, His, bird, his yoke is light. Uh, his yoke is easy and His burden is light because God gave us strength. But doing the work of ministry is not necessarily easy in the sense that we don't have to use strength. We have to use strength. And some people get tired because they don't have strength from God. And even pastors can be in despair and lose strength. Actually, in my ministry, two times in my ministry in two churches, one in one of the churches um, that after I went to that church and served for three months, the pastor said, do you want to be the senior pastor? I, I, I get tired of being the senior pastor. And then in the church, the pastor said to me, I'm tired, I am exhausted. Do you want to be the senior pastor? So there are pastors who get exhausted. But if we have strength from God, we say, God, everything I do, you are happy, and I follow you, you have strength. Then we won't be tired. But there are people, there are young people, there are Christians, there are even pastors who are tired. And then positive examples of people who get strength from God. So, uh, so this is the verse. We want to always refer to the Bible verse. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So there are people who continue to serve God and they're not tired. They continue to be nice to people and they don't, don't get tired. And many Christians have continued motivation and strength even when they face great difficulties or persecution. So some Christians, they can have continual strength. Now, now I prepare myself for the great tribulation. Christians have to face tribulation. Some, you know, uh, some people, not based on the Bible, says that there's pre-tribulation rapture, that that Christians will be raptured before the tribulation starts. This is not biblical. The Bible is very clear that, that uh, even Paul said that we, the time when we will see Jesus, is when Jesus comes back after the great, great tribulation at the end of the world to judge the whole world. So we have to face the great tribulation. And in the Great Tribulation, God will give us extra strength. At that time, Christians can only rely on God only. Because at that time, money cannot buy food. Because uh, if people want to buy food, they have to have the seal of the beast and to worship the beast. If Christians worship the beast or receive the seal of the beast, they will lose salvation. So we do not do that then we can only trust in God for provision. And when we trust in God totally, God can give us strength. So Christians there, then, when they have strength from the Lord, they won't get tired. And I prepare myself. I say, even when one day they beat me, they put me in jail, I'll just keep loving God so that God's joy and God's strength will fill me, that I can experience His power, His presence, that I have strength from Him, and then I will also pray for those in the prison, pray for them to be blessed by God. And then I will have more strength when I pray for other people. 
And so I have the pr preparation in my heart. I'll prepare myself uh, uh, even for great tribulation. So some Christians have continued motivation when they're even when they're persecuted. Persecuted. Sometimes newly converted Christians, even when they don't know much about the Bible, yet they have the motivation from God and have great motivation to do evangelism. Now, some Christians became, you know, they've been Christians for a long time. Sometimes they can lose motivation if they don't have a continual relationship with God. But a new Christian, when they're first newly converted, the Holy Spirit changed them. And then they suddenly experience the Holy Spirit. They have a lot of joy and motivation and strength. And they will have much motivation. So this happened to many new Christians. So I hope that we all will continue to have this continual relationship with God so that we have continual strength, so that we will not be discouraged. We have continual strength. Okay? And then God's nature related to his unlimited strength. So here I name it, God's nature related to his unlimited strength. What nature does God have to have in order to have unlimited strength? These are his own qualities. So the qualities of God, that he has this unlimited strength, there's no limit to his strength. He's never tired, he's never weary. Isaiah 40, 28, God neither faints nor is weary, God never faints and is never tired. He has unlimited strength. He is never tired. From the power manifested in the sun of the universe, we know that the Creator has unlimited power. We look at the universe. We look at the sun. We look at the stars. There's so much power. You know, there is, is more than one sun. There are many suns in the world. Many suns, S-U-N, in the world. And each sun is so powerful, and there are so many suns. This shows that God has unlimited power. And God has the power to give His strength to those who have a good relationship with Him. So many Christians, they receive great strength and mo great motivation. Even when they die for Jesus, they are willing to do that because they have much strength from the Lord. Okay, so that's His nature. And then God's grace related to His unlimited strength. Now what grace does have to give us in order to help us in our weakness. So we think, what nature, what grace does He have to give us so that we have strength in our weaknesses? So what does He have to do? So we go through all the steps, what God has to do in order that we can have this strength. These are His actions to bless us. So grace is His actions. Nature is His quality, inner quality, and His Grace is what He does for us, His action for us to bless us. All these statements should start with God because it's God's grace. It it's start with God, okay? First, God accepts that we have, we all have our weaknesses and He forgives our weaknesses when we repent. So God accepts our weaknesses. He knows that all people are weak. I'm weak by myself. It's God who gives me power, who changes me. If not for God, I would not be so strong. So God accepts that we are weak and He's willing to forgive our weaknesses and when we repent. And then too, He wants to help us with our weakness. He wants to. He has the desire to help us with our weaknesses. And the Holy Spirit works in our heart and motivates us to realize our insufficiencies and moves in us so that we will humble ourselves and hunger for Him. So the Holy Spirit works in our hearts and motivate us to realize our insufficiencies, to let us know that we are insufficient, and moves in us so that we will humble ourselves and hunger for God. So God let us know that we are insufficient, so we need God. And He will move in us so that we'll humble ourselves and hunger for God and desire God's strength. Okay, so that's what He has done in us so that we will hunger for God, so that we'll receive power from God. And then even when we disobey Him, He will continue to work in us in, in order to change us. So even when we disobey Him, He did not stop. He will continue to work in us in order to change us so that we have strength from God. And then E, 
He can give His mental, spiritual, and physical strength to us miraculously when we have a close relationship with Him. Verse 31 says that He shall renew the strength. So He can renew the strength. He has ability to do that, and He would do that. He will give us mental strength of the mind, spiritual strength, that we have spiritual strength to serve God, and physical strength so that we don't get tired to us miraculously as a miracle when we have a close relationship with Him. Now, I have heard this testimony from someone who was not a Christian, who was in another religion that persecutes him much because he found that Jesus was good. He studied the Bible. Actually, he studied the Quran. The Quran talks about Jesus. And then he started to understand Jesus. And then he was persecuted. And his father wanted to kill him. And then he, uh, he asked for strength. He cried to Jesus. And then he was you know, tied up. And then he was beaten. And then he suddenly had strength and jumped up. And then he uh, had the strength to run away. So God can give us physical strength. Um, so God can give us that physical strength uh, when we have a close relationship with Him. F. Compared to people in the world who lose strength when, we've, when they, uh, there should be they, they face bankruptcy or serious health problems. So when they face bankruptcy or serious problem, they will lose, uh, lose strength. Christians who have spiritual strength can be rejoicing even in the most difficult times, including being persecuted. But comparing is, very, uh, is a good way to compare. Uh, when we want to compare the strength of God, we can compare the people of the world and compare God's strength, how God blesses people who trust in God to have strength. That people in the world, some are very rich. Some are very physically strong. They can get very tired and exhausted. But when they trust in Jesus, God can give them unlimited strength and power. So that's comparison. Now, for instance, if we talk about joy, we can compare and say, people in the world, even when they have a lot of money, could have a lot of sadness. But Christians who are poor can have a lot of joy. So when we compare, it will show God's strength much more okay so here we i talk about god's grace in a few points first god accepts all our weaknesses and he forgives our weaknesses and when we repent now you might say i cannot think of so many points it takes time to learn this but we want to think about how many steps does god have to take how many actions does he have to take in order that we can be blessed in that way so that's how how we can how we can talk about God's grace. That's we think about what God has to do. What He has to do. In order to be able to help us. In order to be able to bless us. So how can He give us strength? So we think of different ways. And then He accepts us. He wants to help us with our weakness. That's His desire. And then the Holy Spirit changes our heart. So that we humble ourselves. We uh, realize our insufficiencies and ask for strength and humble ourselves to hunger for God. And then even when we disobey Him, He still continues working on us to, in order to change us so that we'll humble ourselves to ask for God's help. And then He can give us mental, spiritual, and physical strength. And then compare. To people in the world. Some people, they are physically strong, they are rich, but yet when they're disappointed, when they lose money, when they are bank they have bankruptcy or serious health problem, they they uh, they lose strength. But even Christians who are very poor or who are persecuted can have much strength. So we can talk about God's grace in different ways so that people will say, God is so good, there is no reason for us not to have strength. So in the message. In the, past, in the message, we want to encourage people so that they say, 
yes, we have reasons to be to have strength from God. And then also we ourselves, when we preach on a message, we ourselves receive the strength of God. That we know that in my in our days when we have been persecuted by people, when people have gossip against us, when people hurt us, we still have strength. And then we share with people. I have been hurt by people a number of times and I keep praying to God, trusting in God, God you can help me, God you can help me, God you can bless me, you can give me strength. That way I have continual strength even in the midst of persecution and mistreatment. And I thank God that He has given me strength. So I hope we all understand this and then we can have strength and then we can encourage our people to have strength. And then they are attracted to Jesus. When they see that the pastor is full of strength, it's motivation by grace. We are all living under grace. It's like when we have good parents, loving parents, we are motivated to build up the family. If the parents just yell at us and beat us and tell us to do this and do that all the time, the children are not really motivated to love the parents and love the family. But if it's by grace that they experience love from the parents, then they have more motivation. So we want to tell people about God's grace and we ourselves are convinced of God's grace. Now this is not a teaching just from me, it's from the Bible. It's from the Bible that God has so many times promised His all kinds of blessings. He has promised strength, He has promised joy and peace and wisdom and strategy and plans and uh, provision. Everything we need, God has planned and God has promised. So we should encourage people with all the resources we have, all the grace of God. So I hope that we all live in the grace of God and then when we preach, people can see the grace of God and they're attracted to follow God. So I hope that you're, you're attracted to follow God. Uh, you're attracted to say, so many people are serving God under the law that I've, I've heard many messages uh, of people that they just push people. You have to pray more, you have to, you have to give more, give more offering, you have to do this, do that. It's always telling people what to do and you are not loving God, you are not a good Christian uh, by criticism. It's, there are so many people who preach like that and they think that that would change people because that's the worldly way. The worldly parents, they yell at the children and many pastors follow that way. They just yell at the members. Instead of yelling at them, we say, you are loved by God. God loves you. God wants to give you strength. And God is working your heart so that you humble yourself and trust in God for strength. And when you trust in God, He will give you continual strength, even facing uh, uh, persecution. Even when people accuse you or uh, they, they gossip about you, God still gives you strength. So when we see Wow, God is so good. God wants to give us strength. Then we have the motivation to live in the grace of God, to enjoy God, to have a lot of strength from God that we can bless other people. So this is motivation by grace that is from the Bible. From this passage, we see that it's God saying, you know, God is never tired or weary. God has continual strength. And then he who trusts in the Lord will not be tired that we have the strength from the Lord that will mount up like with wings like eagles. So these are the promises of God that God promised to do this. So we use the promises of God to motivate people. And then why many Christians don't have strength from God? Because many Christians don't have good relationship with God and don't rely on God for strength because they just rely on people. B, they rely on themselves for strength. C, many Christians want strength just to glorify themselves. For instance, they want to show off how big a church they have. God is not pleased with that and doesn't give them spiritual strength. So people just want to be proud. I want to be better than other people. Then they are proud and God doesn't like that. So God likes us to be humble and give glory for everything God has done in our lives. And uh, sometimes people tell me, wow, your teaching is good. 
and I say thank God, thank God, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God. I really sincerely thank God. I don't just say it superficially. I sincerely praise God for that because that was not how I was in the past. When I first started as a pastor, I was not like that. God has taught me through the years how to, you know, trust in God's grace and then. When the more I see God's grace, the more I see God is working in our lives to give us blessings, the more I'm motivated, the more I enjoy God, the more I have unlimited strength. So why many people, they, they just want to glorify themselves and then they will, God, you know, God doesn't like that and then they, they will lose the blessings of God. And many Christians set their eyes on the problems and are overwhelmed by the problems. So they just look at the problems so they don't have strength. Okay, reminders and warnings, consequences when people disobey. Some Christians are proud and think that they can do great things with their own strength. God does not like that and they will lose more. So when people are proud, they will lose more. When people rely on themselves, they lose more. Some Christians don't spend time with God and don't trust in God's strength. Their whole lives are full of weaknesses, weakness and failure. When they don't trust in God, they don't spend time with God. You know, we want to spend time with God. We want to rely on God and say, God is so good. God is so good. I love you. I rely on you. I trust in you. I follow you. When we trust in God, when we have a good relationship with God, not only do we spend time praying to Him, but anything, when we do anything else, we can be praising God at the same time. We can, when we're washing dishes, we can say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. When we are brushing our teeth or, or taking a shower, we can be thinking about God and thanking God and loving God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And when people don't have strength from God, they cannot accomplish anything great. Some people even waste their life. So that is the warning. If they don't have strength, they cannot do anything great. And then they can waste their life. So how to enter God's plan? So we think of possible ways to receive strength from God. And then we organize the ways in logical order. So we want to organize them, the points, in a, log a logical way. Okay, so here I, I put down in logical order. First, in Isaiah 40, 29, he gives power to the weak. Trust that God has all authority and strength. When we love and serve Him, He'll give us strength. So God has promised to give us strength. So when we trust in Him and have a good relationship with Him, He will give us strength. B, put down our pride. We don't want to speak to seek strength for our glory. We seek strength, God's will and plan. So we say, it's not for my glory. I want to glorify God. God is the one who does wonderful things in our lives. God is the one who has changed my life. So I want to give all glory to God, both externally and internally. Some people will say, glory to God, glory to God. But in the heart they say, oh, I'm such a great preacher. So we should never think that way. We say, think, Thank God, I have improved because God has changed me. It's God's work. I thank God for that. And then C, dedicate our lives to God. We live for God, then God will give the strength we need. When we live for God, when we offer our body as a living sacrifice, and not, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind, then we'll discern the good and perfect will, pleasing will of God. So, so when, we, uh, when we dedicate our lives to God, then we enter God's perfect plan and He will give us strength. And worship and love God all the time, delight in God, and when God is pleased with us, He will give us strength. So worship Him and love Him and obey Him. And then E, when we are in difficulties, we don't lose hope, for we know that God has everything in His hands. So when we are in difficulties, we just say, Lord, You can open the way for me. You can help me. You can strengthen me. You can do great things. I just trust in You. F, when we praise God and renew and uh, receive strength, then we thank God wholeheartedly. When we thank God with a joyful heart, we'll receive more strength. So when we receive strength, we thank God. Hallelujah, I'm very happy. And when we thank God, we receive more strength. G, when we do anything sincerely for God, rejoice in God, for He is happy. 
even when we give a cup of water, when we rejoice in what we do for God, we have hope and strength. So whenever we do any little thing for God, we rejoice in God and we are happy. Now, that's not pride. That's not being proud. We just say, I thank God. He gives me strength so that I can help other people. He gives me strength so I can serve God and God is happy with me. Thank God, thank God, hallelujah. So when we are joyful, we have more strength. Some people just look at what they cannot do and then they, they get disappointed. They have less strength. They would get disappointed. But instead we'll say, thank God today I have give, given a cup of water to someone. I have helped someone. I pray for someone. I have helped someone spiritually. Whatever we have done for God, we say, thank God, thank God, I have done it for God. And God is very happy. So I can be joyful. When I am joyful, I have more strength. And when we serve God with, with His strength, He rewards us. So uh, the, uh, uh, the how is always to encourage us with the reward. God will always reward us when we obey Him. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate preaching this message just by looking at the text, okay? And then I'll just demonstrate this. We'll read again. Have you not heard? Have you not uh, sorry, have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is a wonderful passage that talks about our God, the creator of the ends of the world. He can create everything in the world. He neither faints nor is weary. So that's his nature. He is full of power. He, is, he has unlimited power. He is more powerful than the sun. He is more powerful than all the suns in the universe. All the sons were created by Him. That is how powerful He is. And then He gives power to the weak. He doesn't just keep His power. He is willing to give to us. But in order to give the strength to us, He needs to change our heart first. Because when we are proud, we cannot receive His strength. So He helps us so that we will humble ourselves and say, Lord, I need You. I need Your strength. I'm nothing, I'm insufficient, I need your strength. So when we trust in God, we have more strength. When we pray to God more, when we praise God more, hallelujah, 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 thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, then we have more joy and more strength. When we open our heart to Him, when we praise Him more, our heart will be open, and then He can pour His strength into our heart. So that's how God works. He can give us strength. He can change our heart. He can change proud people to become humble people. He can change weak people to become strong people. He can change selfish people to become loving people who are willing to spend time and energy to love other people. And then when we uh, have the strength and serve God, He will reward us. He will give us more strength and more wisdom so that we can do greater and greater things for God. And then when, when we look at people, even the youths shall faint. Even young people shall faint. Young people can get tired and they can fall down totally. So there are weak, a negative examples. There are even Christians who are weak because they just look at themselves. They look at the problems. They don't trust in God much. They don't rely on God much. They don't have a close relationship with God. And they just look at their needs. They, and they just want to glorify themselves and they don't have much strength. But Christians who rely on God and say, Lord, you have unlimited power. I just trust in you. I have unlimited power. I can serve you and glorify you. Then they have more strength and more, more power. And then uh, those who wait on the Lord, that we look upon the Lord, we think about the Lord, we praise God, we love God, we wait on the Lord. And then we'll receive strength. God will renew our strength. And they shall mount up with wings like eagles that will have strength like the eagles. And we'll run and not be weary. And we'll, 
and when we walk and we're not faint that we can serve God for a long time, we can help people for a long time, we can work for a long time and not be tired, that God can give us that strength. Okay, so God is disgraced. He is his nature. He is full of power. He has unlimited power. He has the power to raise Jesus from the dead. And he's, He wants to give us this power. The reason why many Christians don't have this power is not that God doesn't have the power. It's not that God doesn't want to give them the power. It's because they don't trust in God. They don't have a good relationship with God. They just want their own glory. And God works in our heart. He changes our heart so that we are humble, so that we come to God for strength, so that we, we delight in God. We, we desire God. We are so happy because of God. Then we have more strength. And we say, Lord, I rely on you. I enjoy you. I trust you. I trust in you. I, I delight in you. And then when we praise God, we have more strength. And then when we have more strength, we bless people. Then God is very happy with us. And He'll give us more strength and more wisdom. And then when we are rejoicing in God all the time, that would have strength. That change people. People will say, wow, you are so full of joy. You are so full of strength. And people will be attracted by us because His, His grace is to give us this strength. And then when we have this strength to bless people, He will reward us and bless our whole life. And then, but why do many Christians don't have this strength? Reason is because they look at the problems, they are discouraged, they, uh, they look for their own glory, they, they don't have a good relationship with God, and they don't want to serve God. So they don't have strength. And the warning is, when people don't have strength, what happens is they lose strength and they don't serve God. The, the more they, you know, the more they're lazy, the lazier they become. They don't want to wake up, they just want to sleep. They, want to, they don't want to do anything for God. They are tired all the time because they always look at the problems and they don't have strength. And then there is warning. These people, you know, they will not have the reward from God and then the worst scenario for people who don't have any strength from God and they don't obey God in any way that there is something wrong with the faith and they can lose salvation that's the worst scenario now we're not saved by good works we're not saved by strength we are saved by grace through faith but when we have faith in God God will be present with us and he always motivate us to change if we don't change at all that means there's something wrong with our faith and if there's something you know that we don't have faith at all then we don't have salvation we are saved by grace through faith so how can we have strength how how can we receive this strength from god god wants to give us the strength so first have faith he wants to give us the strength he has unlimited strength so we want you know we trust in god and then we we worship god and we praise God. Thank you for everything. Hallelujah. Thank you for the sky. Thank you for the trees. Thank you for the flowers. Thank you for the food. Thank you for our body. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I love you. I adore you. I like you. I desire you. When we like God, when we desire God, then we have more strength. And then we remember how God has given us strength in the past. We thank God. The more we thank God, the more we have strength. And then... Uh, what we, we don't want to glorify ourselves. We just want to glorify God. Then God will also give us more strength because He sees that we are humble. And then when we have the strength of God, we help people. We help people to believe in Jesus. When we help people believe in Jesus, we will have exceeding joy. Have you experienced the joy of bringing someone to Jesus? You'll feel very joyful. And then when we're joyful, we have more strength. And then God will bless us. We'll remember that. We'll say, thank God. Everything I do for God, God is very happy. God will remember me. And God will reward me. And God will bless me. Then we'll have more joy and more strength. So we'll say, everything I do for God, God is very, very happy. So, okay, this is so, I demonstrate how to preach this message. 